Hello and welcome to this video. What I'll be doing is showing you how to repair your Dayport N-Gage Class 142 DMU. It's a very nice model. They've got the cab front right and sides of all rivet detail. Very nice model. It even has electrical connectors in the couplings as, as well between the units, which is very nice. You still need two DCC chips if that's what you if you want to run DCC digital, which is okay because then you can change the lights at each cab independently. But having the electrical contact between the two units gives you extra pickups, which is quite nice. Especially considering that this unit only has a set of wheels here and he here. So it's not really much for it to pick up on. It's a long wheelbase, but if it loses power here, it's only going to be that wheel set rather than having bogies at each end, which would then give it four axles per carriage. It's only us two. So now on to the repairing of this model. It's got gears on the axles and a set just in front and another one a bit further back it's the same at this end and you might notice that your model doesn't seem to run very well or it's quite slow doesn't seem to be able to put its own weight even when it's just a single carriage that's quite likely to be down to and the gears being stripped, which is a bit of a surprise for me. So I've not known that's happened to Daypool models for, well, since they started N-Gage. I've known other manufacturers to have split gears and the teeth being worn, but never with Daypool. So this is a bit of a first. So I'm just going to open it up. What you need to be careful of is this exhaust as it curves under the model at the back. So you don't really want to open it from the back in case you damage the exhaust. If you're lucky, it would just detach from the body. If you're unlucky, it will snap. So it's best not to risk it. So what I'll do now is just open it up. What I find easiest is to pull from the front. And there we go, that's off. And now, what you need to do with Daple models is be very careful. So, notice I didn't just let it drop or still holding it pretty tight. What Daple have done is attach the lights via a cable and switch. So, if you're not too careful, you might end up ripping the cables out of the, sorry, not switch, a plug. Plug and socket. What you don't want to do is rip the wires out of here, even though you could fix it, but you really don't want to rip them out of inside there. So that would be a pain to try and fix. So what you'll need to undo this is a very small flathead screwdriver. It can be quite fiddly. You push on one side. Be careful not to stretch the wires or pull them apart. And try and hold the switch at the same time with your other hand. And there we go. That's unplugged now, so we'll put this to one side. Now the next job, it's even more difficult, would be releasing the motor from the chassis. Well, it's got a, like a motor chassis from the plastic chassis. You've got a clip here that holds this chassis to there. Got one here, here and here. And it's the same on the other side. 
clip, clip, clip. And they face different directions. So it's, it's very well held in. It's quite nice that Dable have done this. It stops it sagging or having any issues, although this is a fairly short wheelbase model. You wouldn't have thought it'd have a problem with that. But it's nice that it's there. Now this is, as I say, quite difficult. What I found easiest is to pull the ends off just a bit, if you can. Which is just pulling towards you away from it. So then it's released. And same on this side. Which will be the front. This is the front of the loco. Or multiple units if it's coupler there. As this is the electrical coupler at the back between the units. I'll do the same again. And now what you need to do is try and pull down from the middle. I say the middle because it's the safest part. As you've got your fine, very fine detail along here. And on the other side to end up pulling on there, it might snap off. So in the middle, it's not really much to hold on to, but it will save you damaging anything. And there we go, it's coming off now. And I'll just try and wiggle the front off. Pull this down again as it's sprung back into place. And as I said, yeah, it's quite fiddly, so there we go, that's it out. So this is your chassis, the wheels stay in. Quite nice. Something else that I quite like what Daple have done is in here you've got brass contacts. I'll remove a wheel set so you can have a look. So you've brass contacts inside and as the point of the axle touches in there. So there's always going to be a contact between it and the points of the axle being that it sat inside it's highly unlikely to get any dirt. Whereas if you have contacts on the inside face of the wheel, it is exposed quite a lot. Whereas here, it's a very, it's a very small contact point between the wheel and the pickup. So it's quite nice and it's well hidden. So looks very good. So here's the chassis now. So what we need to do is split it apart. It says split chassis, which is quite good. So it makes it nice and easy for electrical work. You pick up on one side, go to the motor, pick up on the other side, go to your motor. It does have um, DCC capabilities, but in theory it is the same thing. This side to there, this side to there. What we need to do to split the chassis, you've got a screw here that holds a contact, a pickup. Don't be worried about it thinking you've broke a wire. At the back of the unit, there is nothing. It's just, it just comes up from the wheel into the, the pickups inside. And this little L shaped, almost like a ledge, sits on there and then contacts into the chassis. So, if you see it like that, don't worry, you've not snapped off any wires. You've got a screw holding that on there. A screw here holding the chassis together. Another screw here holding the chassis together. A screw here that holds the pickup. This one is wired in. You do, you all need some kind of wiring to get to here. So be careful with this one. You don't need to worry too much about that. But yeah, this one needs to be careful. But first thing, so don't forget, 
remove your blanking chip or DCC chip. It's so next 18, so it just lifts off. And the reason for that is you've got two screws here, one on this side, one on that side. It holds your board in place, and it also holds the chassis together. So you'll need to take this screw out first. You don't have to, but it's probably safer. So you take this one out first. So then when you take all of these out, if the chassis, for some reason, does drop away, it's not going to damage your board. On all these screws are Phillips head, so small Phillips head. Modelling screwdriver or jeweler's screwdriver will work. So just carefully unscrew. So that one's out now. What I'll do is get a little container for the screws. So if I drop any of them, I'll, I'll drop it in the container instead of down for the carpet monsters. We've got the container now, put the screw inside the container, that is something I seem to forget quite a lot of times, and what I'll do now is unscrew it over the container, so if I do drop it, I'm not going to lose it. You don't need to worry too much about these screws, as they're all the same. The ones along the side, they're all the same screw. So I'll hurry up a bit now. It's probably a bit boring watching me take some screws out of the chassis. And this one with the pickup that's not attached to anything, I'm going to put it in here again, just so I know where it is and I don't lose it. So now that's all the screws taken out and I'll put it out of the way so I don't knock it onto the floor. I'm trying to avoid. So there is some insulation tape here, which is holding the wires that go along here, which is for your internal carriage lighting. If you ever wanted to attach it, just plugs in here. Again, it's the same as your normal head and tail lights with Daple. You've got a socket, you just plug it in. Same at this end. As this goes across the chassis, what we'll need to do is just lift it up and pull the wire out of the way. So now, just a quick check before we do anything. The screw that's holding the board on this side is out. The screw for the pickup is out. The two holding the chassis together are out. And the one at the pickup, pickup at the other end is out. There's no wires or anything attached on this side. So what we can do is just carefully pull the chassis apart. But remembering you do have that pickup there, so don't just rip it apart. If it feels a bit tight, just be patient with it. So that's nicely come away, but did need to be fairly careful and patient. So here's the, the chassis, what it looks like. You've got your motor there, which I believe is a cordless motor. And you've got your worm gear at, each, at either end. Two gears at this end, two gears at that end. And as you can see, this one's got all its teeth, so that one's fine. I'm not sure if you can see it on this on the camera. But this one does as well, and so does that one. But here, this small gear, which is the primary gear, the teeth on that one has been stripped. So I'll just lift this gear off. There's that one. 
Now this one, try and get the camera to focus. You've got your big gear that goes around that side, around the outside. Then there's a smaller one at the, that sits on top of it. Now the big one works with your worm gear. The small one works with this gear, which in turn drives your wheels. Well, this gear, you can see it as pretty much just like a round wheel. There's no teeth on it. Sorry about that little jump in the video. I ran out of space um, on the phone, so I have to switch to the memory card. And so what I was saying is, this gear here, the smaller of the two is the primary gear. And the teeth is being stripped on it. So I'll take this one off, which is the secondary gear, the bigger one. Kind of like with um, schools in the UK, you'd have your primary school and your secondary school. Primary school is a smaller one. Secondary school is your big school. And the gears on this, at this end, they're fine. Got the, all of them got the teeth on there, fine. Camera will focus on it. There you go. So all the teeth are fine on here. This one, you can see where they're worn away. So the place to get your gears is DCC Supplies. They are Daples. Um, spare supplier and the gears they just they didn't cost much I brought two of each because it does have two of each okay I didn't need to I just needed the one secondary gear but I didn't I didn't know that until I opened it up so class 142 engage well the ends we get for engage secondary gear one pound and a penny that's them each, so two pound, two pence. And same for the primary gear. So this is a very affordable repair. It's definitely something you can do. And here's the gears. As you can, you can clearly see the teeth on there, and this primary gear it has a an outer gear which is a bigger one, which contacts the worm gear. Then there's a very small one sat on top which drives this gear here, the secondary one, the bigger one, which then drives your wheels. Try and turn it around for you. Not quite sure if you can see it, but there is like a smaller gear on there. So I'll take this one out. And we can compare them. We'll get there eventually. So there's the worn gear. The one that's worn out. And that's your new one. This is almost smooth compared to this spiky toothed one. Sorry about that little jump in the video. I ran out of space um, on the phone, so I have to switch to the memory card. And so what I was saying is, this gear here, the smaller of the two is the primary gear, and the teeth is being stripped on it. So I'll take this one off, which is the secondary gear, the bigger one. Kind of like with um, schools in the UK, you'd have your primary school and your secondary school. Primary school is a smaller one, secondary school is your big school. 
And the gears on this at this end, they're fine. Got the, all of them brought the teeth on there, fine. Camera will focus on it. There you go. So all the teeth are fine on here. This one, you can see where they're worn away. So the place to get your gears is DCC Supplies. They are Daples um, spare supplier. And the gears, they just they didn't cost much. I brought two of each because it does have two of each. Okay, I didn't need two, I just needed the one secondary gear, but I didn't I didn't know that until I opened it up. So class 142 engage. Well the ends we get for engage. Secondary gear. One pound and a penny. That's seven each, so two pound, two pence. And same for the primary gear. So this is a very affordable repair. It's definitely something you can do. And here's the gears. And as you can, you can clearly see the teeth on there. And this primary gear, it has a an outer gear, which is a bigger one, which contacts the worm gear. Then there's a very small one sat on top, which drives this gear here, the secondary one, the bigger one, which then drives your wheels. Try and turn it around for you. Not quite sure if you can see it, but there is like a smaller gear on there. So I'll take this one out, and we can compare them. We'll get there eventually. So there's the worn gear, the one that's worn out, and that's your new one. This is almost smooth compared to this spiky toothed one. So what we all need to do is get rid of that one, as it's worn out, it's not going to do anything, it makes contact with the worm gear, but nothing else. So with this, you'll have your big gear, even though it is the primary one, if your big gear at the bottom, you have the chassis this way, which is probably easiest, big gear down there, and the smaller one on top. That just drops in nicely. Just give it a little push just to make sure it's gone all the way through. There we go, that's nicely seated. So now what I need to do is put the secondary gear in. I'm not going to replace it as it doesn't need to be replaced. So let's try and drop this in. Now, what would be quite good, would be a good idea, would be to add some oil now. But I'd rather follow Dable's instructions and have it all put together and then just drop it in through the little gaps. So I don't really want to be smearing the gears with oil. As too little oil can cause them to wear out, too much oil, it can also do that or it can damage the motor, get splattered around. And then you just lose electrical connection, which means your model's not going to work. So what I'll do is just make sure the gears are seated correctly, which they are. And I'll put the model back together. Which is just the reverse of how I took it apart. So I'll try and be quick with it. Save boring you. That just drops on. There we go, that's seated in the right place. And what you need to do is this plug here, make sure it goes back in to where it's supposed to be, in a little cutout there. Wrap your wire over. 
And now, if you have an issue with the wires being seen through the windows, now would be a good time to add a bit more black insulation tape over here to push them down. Except you wouldn't have to do it at this point, but it would be nice and easy. You could just wrap it around. I'm not going to do that as I'm, I'm not too bothered. And also, I could just take the body off and do it then. So what I'll need to do now is just put the screws back in. So I'll work from one end to the other, just going along the chassis. So this one we have to pick up. That one should, I'll split this one in first, as it's the most important, as I don't want to end up having to re-solder the connection. Sorry if I have my hands in the way, but I was trying to hold everything in place. Well, that's going through now, so just carefully, very carefully screw it in. Don't want to over tighten it or anything. And just something else to mention. These pickups, the piece that sticks out, you're holding the model, sticks out, it points to you. Make sure it's on same on the both sides. So it, stick, it points out, it points to you. That's the correct way to do it. So what it does, it sits on top of these very, very fine brass contacts that poke up through the chassis. And that's how it makes contact. And again, while... It's in this um this position all separated. If you do have connection issues, now would be a good time to solder from here to here. But be very careful you don't melt your chassis. So my advice would be to have your soldering iron quite hot so you can go in quickly, melt the solder on rather than having it like a medium heat or just a little bit hot when you have to spend a while just sat there trying to melt. Even with flux, it's still going to take longer with a cooler iron. So I'll move that back out of the way and put all the, get the screws back in. So that's that one in and I'll go back to here I thought it'd be best to go across just I think it might be a bit safer and this way I can be sure that the chassis is going back together straight no distortions it's not warped or anything that was close yeah, so I'm just getting the last chassis screw in now. Again, don't over tighten anything. I don't think it would actually have an effect, but there's always the worry. If you over tighten it, you're going to put stresses on the motor, the worm gear, and the gears that's just been replaced. So never over tighten your chassis. There's the screw for the last pickup. Uh, and the pickup as well. I think what I'll do is just drop the pickup up in place and again make sure this piece that sticks out is, or another way to think of it, is away from the model. So I don't want it pointing into the model, it needs to be away from the model. I 
I'll see if I can get the screw to stay attached to the screwdriver so I can just drop it in. I don't think that's going to work. I'll just try and realign this and go for it. So now the light bar socket is back in its socket in the chassis. The insulation tape has gone back over, holding these wires down. Got the rear pickup reattached with the sticky out bit sticking out towards me or away from the muzzle. Two screws in the chassis and this pickup that is soldered on. That one is back in place. So just, it's always a good idea to just check, make sure we've got everything back. Now the last thing to do, well, the screws anyway, would be to put the one back in here into the board. With some models, this would be your connection from the chassis to the board, so it's always a good idea to make sure you put it back. Being that this is a very small screw, it's going to be quite fiddly and something you don't want to lose. It's attached to the screwdriver now, which is good. Should make the job a bit easier. So what I'll carefully do is just try and drop it in and then start rotating. So that's in for now. Again, don't over tighten it. As soon as the screwdriver stops, that's it. Stop. Never keep turning trying to make it very tight to hold it in place. It's a model. It's not vibration or anything like that. It'll be fine. Now I'll just put the... DCC chip or blanking chip back in just so you know it's done you wouldn't exactly have to do it now but I prefer to do it like that so it's just then in order now of your gears the wheel gears as I took one out to show you it's off center so it's more towards one side and it's the same at both ends of the chassis let's stop it rolling so here you've got where it goes up and then down down and then up which is the opposite which means your gear sits here and here you'll also notice on the chassis the gap here is just for an axle here you've got an axle and a gear and also you can see your secondary gear would need to contact with that one and it's the same here This is also best done without that in. Just guessing by the way the chassis is designed with this block of metal here, which is just for the axle. I get the feeling it'll be better to put the wheel set back in now. So I'll just drop it in from one side, push, push it in and then just check. Always a good idea to check how freewheeling it is with no gears attached because if it's not now would be a good time to adjust it because if the wheel is getting stuck it's just going to put stresses on the chassis while the gears in the chassis and the motor and you're going to have a stripped gear again which you don't want to do so now the way you'll find out which is the front which is the back the back has the electrical connector. The front is where you control the train from. And here is where you control the train from with your digital chip. So front, the DCC control and the control cab, which means control control, they go together. So what you'll need to do is just lower it into place and just Push it back together. Oh, sorry about that. And um, there is almost like a plate here. 
I'd advise using that to, to press onto so you don't damage your details. You've got quite a bit of fine detail, you don't want to ruin it. So layer it into place. Check the clips are lined up. You can hold it here on that plate and here above the motor, not on the chip because you don't want to damage it. And just squeeze it. And here, press on the edge, not on the plug. That's clips in. That's clips in there. What I'm going to do is just hold it on the edge there, not on the plug. And there we go. That's all connected back up. Now, the body. This needs to go back on. I can't just put it on like that because of the exhaust. As you can see, it does stick out quite far. And as you, as you can see, it wraps under the model. So when we put it back together, you'll need to slide the back in first and then clip the front in. It's just something to think about. Now, for the lights, what I'm going to do is hold the switch, sorry, the, the plug, and go for it, and then push it back together. I'm trying to get the camera to focus on this. So there is a tiny little piece of plastic there that fits into the bottom piece. If, you, if you're not too sure about that, on the and get the camera to work on the plug the top of it you can see what you could say is exposed contacts this goes at the top so exposed contacts get at the top that's how you know it goes the right way it might work the other way you might, you might be able to plug it in the other way but your lights might not work or they'll work in reverse so it's best contacts up, just like with this. The contacts are up for you to plug it in. Same with this, just an easy way to remember it. And then squeeze it back together. And then have a good check over, making sure it's seated right. There's a bit of a gap. So now that's seated right on that side and on that side. So now it's time to put it back together. Don't worry too much about the wires here. What you, you see, they're plugged in together, so they'll be fine. So remember, back in first, so you don't damage the exhaust. It'll be just be more work if you do, and and also more work if you ever wanted to take it off. So that's in place. The exhaust has got some space. Now we just clip it in. And there you have it. Daypool class 142 gear replacement. So that's all fixed now and it all ran fine. So now it's back together again. What I'm going to do is put a small amount of oil on the gears. This is what I use, label 108 for tire tiny motors and gearboxes, motorized models and hand tools. So it'll be the perfect thing to use. Here's the bottle with a type of um, needle at the end. So you don't end up with a lot of oil, it's just a small amount. I'll just drop a tiny, tiny bit onto the new gear. And a tiny, tiny bit on the secondary gear. And while we're here, at this end as well. It doesn't need to be coated in gear, in, um, in oil, sorry. So that's done. So it's had a new gear fitted and it's been oiled. So what you'd need to do is give a good run in. Same as if the model was brand new, half an hour in each direction. But what I'm going to do, just so we all know that it works, 
and I know for myself what I'm going to do is just push it on this test track and just test it with um, a battery. Nine volt battery with a connection on it. Same as what you'd have in your smoke alarm. So what I'll do is just give it a little test. I think you've got dirty track here. So that runs that way. And there is definitely dirty track. It's a piece of M track I thought I'd use for the video. So the model now runs in both directions, which is good. So what I'll need to do now is just give it a good run, get the oil around the gears, and that will be it. It'll be a perfect model again. So yeah, that all works nicely. So thank you for watching. And if you've liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe. And feel free to share the video. I'm sure it'll help someone out there. Yeah, thank you again. And goodbye.